Right standing that God requires must be born out of a righteousness that is not contaminated with the filth of this world. Is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> so, Jesus is God, but there is a God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if as awesome as Jesus is and his ministry, he will submit to God and make him God. Then it's a great privilege for you to have him as God. You see all the wonders that happen in Jesus' life while he was on earth. All those reality were a manifestation of Almighty God in him. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. <laughs> If this year is truly the year of the power and the glory, then you must know this dimension of God that reveals Him as the Father of glory. You can walk beyond the understanding you have of the dimensions of God. I will explain that to you. You see, in the book of Genesis, God revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the Almighty God. The Almighty God is the Hebrew word El Shaddai. And what it means is that God is all sufficient. So all that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob walked in was the all-sufficiency of God. Abraham suffered his own famine, you remember? He went down to Egypt, but God sustained him. Isaac went through the same thing, you remember in Gera, in Genesis 26, suffered his own famine. Jacob had his own famine experience. But they were all sustained by God. They were blessed, they were made rich. Now, by the time God wanted to bring Israel out of Egypt, he revealed another dimension of himself as the Lord. When he says, I am that I am, <laughs> it means I am the Lord. So he told Moses, he said, I am the Lord that is sending you to go bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. I revealed myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as Almighty God. They, were, they didn't know me as the Lord. You know why he had to reveal himself as the Lord? <laughs> because Pharaoh himself was God. Do you understand that? Pharaoh is not just served, he's worshipped. That's why when Moses came to Pharaoh, he said, Who is that God that can deliver you out of my hand? He had magicians that could wield demonic powers. So God needed to reveal himself in the dimension of the Lord. When you say somebody is Lord, it means he's master, it means he's in charge. It means he calls the shot. It means that every other person must submit to him. Whether willingly or by force. Now it was that dimension of revelation that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. So if you know God only as the all-sufficient God and all you have been looking for and enjoying is provision and in the midst of that experience you are going through demonic oppression and attack by the hand of a strong man you will need the revelation of god as the lord for you to break free from that stronghold is it clear to you the reason why we are not all at the same level is because our revelation of god differs some of us know God as the God of holiness, 
and that is all you know don't steal don't lie don't cheat but you don't know god as the healer so even though you are living a holy life when sickness comes you are limited you don't know the healer you don't understand that he who is holy is also the healer why some know him as the healer and lives in health they don't know him as the supplier of needs so they live in health they live in holiness but they are poor do you get that all right it says that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him are you getting it now it will give you the spirit of wisdom and it will also give you a revealed experiential knowledge of his identity and personality so you come to know him Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 and 18 you come to know him in the many dimensions of realities that exist in God is it clear to you you come to know him as the El Shaddai the provider the one that supplies all your needs and you progress beyond that you know him as the Ebenezer the one that helps you when things are challenging you will invoke that dimension of God so you you need the spirit of wisdom and then the revelation of the knowledge of him a knowledge that has been revealed to you when I started praying for the sick one day I stood on a healing line in school at um, Akindeko Hall main auditorium of University of Benin and the first person came and said I said what's wrong with you she said headache receive be healed in Jesus name. the next person came I said what's wrong with you he said malaria be healed in the name of Jesus the next person came I said what's wrong with you she said, she said I'm having kidney failures my heart flew And then the Lord rebuked me. He said, don't you know that the same anointing that heals headache, that heals malaria, is the same anointing that can restore kidney? Now, that rebuke brought a revelation. So that day I got to know something, that it was the same power of God that works all manner of healings and miracles it's the same anointing it's just that that anointing can operate in varying degrees it's the same iron that smoothens cotton that will smoothen a jean trouser it's the same iron but it will operate at different intensity the intensity that will come upon the cutting material it will burn it do you understand that so god will have to regulate the flow of that anointing to meet each need i, I saw two minister impact a, a minister and one of them whom i know is very anointed when he got to the individual he did his hand like this gently and touched him a little bit 
and he withdrew his hand. The other minister is anointed to, but when he got to the minister, he hit his head, and the minister fell back. He hit another washer that was standing. That one, that one flew off. Meanwhile, it is the first and uh, minister that is most anointed, that is more anointed than that minister. But the, what he administered, he administered it very delicately. Because that minister that was impacted could have collapsed and be slain for the rest of the service. So he had to touch him so gently so that <laughs> he still remains in his conscious state. Because somebody had encountered that anointing before and was off for three hours. So the man of God knows now how to administer it very gently. But the other minister, he just, he just threw it. So those are diversity of intensity. But they were administered with different understanding. So the man who has the very hot iron that the intensity could burn a cotton material. When he wants to iron the cotton material, what will he do? He would reduce the intensity so that he will not do more harm than good. He will not do damage to what he is supposed to beautify. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Do you get it now? So when it comes to demonic oppression, <laughs> the Holy Ghost will increase the intensity. And when that fire falls, oh, demons will take off. And that individual will be free. But it's the same anointing. Praise God. It's the same iron. Are you getting it? So, what Paul prescribed is in verse 18. He says, in order for the workings of the spirit of wisdom and revelation to begin to operate in your life, God will have to do something to you. And what he will do to you, he says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. So, something will have to happen for you to begin to operate in the spirit of wisdom and revelation because the revelation we are talking about is a revelation that will deliver to you the knowledge of him that you may know experientially that you may have intercourse with the reality that exists in god but that is not a possibility until something happens to you now the word that is used there is the greek word for tizo for tizo and what it means is to be flooded with rays of light to be flooded with rays of light so god will have to bring a circumcision of your mind and the Result of that operation is that it will open up your mind to the flood of the light of God. And when that experience, that encounter takes place, your mind will become open to the operation of the spirit of wisdom and the revelation of the knowledge of God. It is the same fire that Moses saw on the mountain of Horeb, Mount Horeb, that the children of Israel saw. But when the children of Israel saw it, what did they do? They ran. What did Moses do? He stood. Now the reason that possibility could happen was that before now Moses also has seen that fire. You remember when God first appeared to him, he appeared as a fire in a burning bush that was not consumed do you understand that moses looked at that fire <laughs> he said what is this this is a great sight now god began to walk in him 
to the point where he decided to say let me go and see what this great sight is all about and when he got there at some point god told him he said take off your shoes now the reason god said to him take off your shoes is not so that we can be taking off our shoes before we come to the church god was telling him that this reality that you are about to step into will not be based on the possibility of human strength do you understand that you have to come on a new dimension of the grace of god so take off your shoe so that you can step on holy ground and when you step on holy ground because god has sanctified that ground there will be a transformation in your life that will consecrate you to god will make you holy and then will impart to you a revelation of god that will enable you to stand in his presence so the circumcision that encounter that operation took place when moses was in the wilderness so now when moses sees the cloud and god say come he's bold enough to come you see when when god encounters you and fear leaves you if somebody carries a machine gun and point it at you your heart will not skip do you understand that your heart will not skip if god encounters you and does certain things to you you won't be thinking like a normal human being do you understand that it, it, your, your marriage may be delayed it won't bother you your child may be sick it won't bother you there may be no money in your pocket it won't bother you your expectations may not be met it won't but because something has happened to you. you are not a normal human being like the others a believer operates in two dimensions of life he operates in the breath of life which is the mortal life then he operates in the life of god which is eternal life now there are a lot of limitations that constrain the natural life the breath of life for instance if you are operating in that life alone you will be subject to sickness to attack to oppression but if you enter into the possibility that exists in the second life which is the eternal life you will operate in the class of god so when sickness affliction attack sees you it will have to bow down But the challenge is that most of us even though we have eternal life we are still operating in the mortal life so you are still limited you are still subject to affliction to attack to sickness and problems and challenges you need to come up higher i need to stop now because of time but one of the things that must happen to you is called fotizo fotizo and what that simply means is that there would be a flooding of light the light of god the mystery of god into the eyes of your understanding when blind men examine an elephant and they are telling you about the elephants one of them will say oh it's like a wall a flat wall that one examined his side another will tell you like it's like a conduit pipe a long pipe that one examined the trunk another will tell you that it's like a tree ah a very tall tree it examined the leg but the man who has eyes would explain it more accurately he's a very large mammal with a trunk with four legs with a large side that's the man who is giving clear perspective and the reason he's able to do that is because his eyes are what are open you see many of us our spiritual eyes are closed even the eyes of our soul that is the eyes of our understanding they are also closed 
That's why you don't know what is made for your peace. You don't know God. And your relationship with God is suffering because you lack a revelation of who he is. There's a limitation to the sacrifice you can make for God because you don't know him. You don't know how faithful he is. You don't know how committed he is. You don't know the extra mile he can go to. That God can kill hundreds of men for the sake of one man. You know Elijah was one man. And yet, a captain and the 50 came. Now these people are also Israelites too. And they said, man of God, come down. And Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let the fire fall. These are married men with children. But this man by the name Elijah has entered dimensions of God and has touched possibilities in God that made him believe God so much that if he says anything, God will do it. It is based on that understanding that made him make sacrifices for God. Serve God the way he did. And when it, the time came for him to source the realities that exist in God, there was no failure. Because he himself has not failed to deliver on God's expectation in his walk with God. And the first 51 men perished. The second 51 men perished. And when the third set came, they bent on their knees and began to beg him. And the Bible says an angel appeared and said, go, nothing will happen to you. Now if God will kill for a man, is there anything he will withhold from that man? But when you don't know him, <laughs> you won't make sacrifice for him. You don't know that one of his own gesture of favor would outweigh your sacrifice if you even live for a thousand years. One of God's tips to you will change the life of your lineage forever. Your lineage forever. When David said he would build God a house, God said, you want to build me a house? Ah, I remember I took you from following sheep. I remember I made you king. I cut off your enemies before you. Ah, so you, you want to build me a house? I build you an everlasting house. I build you an everlasting kingdom. Your generations to generations will not cease to sit on the throne of Israel. He wants to make a sacrifice. God's tip, God's gesture settled him from generation to generation that this Christ is called the son of David. And that in eternity, the person that will sit as throne, as on the throne as Lord and King, will be Jesus, the son of David. It was because of his sacrifice, the man proposed in his heart to give to God. And God said, ha, ha, all right, let me give you a little tip of my favor, a little gesture. Uh, I dash you, Israel. Remain king forever. Upon the sin of Solomon, God will not change his mind. What sin did Saul commit? It would, Jesus would have been called the seed of Saul. He just disobeyed God's word. Solomon married outlandish women. And God will say, bet for your father, David. Bet for your father. May your sacrifice secure your children. May you catch a glimpse of the revelation of God that will change the way you walk with God. That will change the way you commit to God in terms of time, energy, resources, sacrifice for him, live holy for him. That will make God give you a little tip. Amen. That even when they throw a bomb in a place and everyone is knocked out, the angels will secure your own child, your grandchild, your great-grandchild because of what you did. He said, but because of my friend Abraham, I will not forget Israel. He's my friend. Abraham was already dead long ago. <laughs> God was too faithful to forget his covenant. Brethren, we have to stop here. But this must form the body of your prayers. 
I know we've just ended a 30 days fast. <laughs> but you see, we are called to be priests. And the implication of that is that we must stay on the altar of prayer till we breathe our last breath. And the earlier you understand that, the better for you. You know, some of us think that spiritual warfare is fought once and for all. No, my dear, it's, it's daily. You say we wrestle not. As long as you are carrying the belt, you will keep going to the ring to defend it. They will keep summoning you. Because the younger wrestlers are flexing their muscles and say, we want the belt too. So you keep going to the ring to defend that championship. And that is how it is. Jesus has given us the victory. We must keep defending the victory. Amen. We must keep enforcing the victory. So spiritual warfare is, is till you die. As the need arises, you will rise and fight. It's not that you fight every day, but as the needs arise, you will arise and fight. And so is prayers. You will have to spend time with your maker. I need to stop. I want you to pray. Paul said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, who grant to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He says that the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your understanding, may be baptized or may be flooded with light. That illumination will come. Revelation, understanding will come. You will see things differently. You will know things other people don't know. You will operate by wisdom. When they look at you, they will marvel. Say, what manner of man is this? That such mighty works are wrought with him by his hand. What kind of wisdom is given to him? That such mighty works are wrought in his hand. I'd like you to pray this morning. Oh Jesus, Sakoni Kalabanash, flood our hearts with the light of God, the light of God. Flood the hearts of our brethren. Flood the hearts of our family members. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. We rebuke the alienation of darkness. We rebuke the blindness of darkness on our minds. Oh Lord, upon our brethren, upon our members and partners. Flood your light, oh Lord. May canta palaga in la prende de prege do bo shandalaba in le prevege de bo condoli ge de bo shandalaba in la prende de prege de bo katana ba igele bo in la bana zopra vende galaba yene motondo in kende pre 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 oh Lord, flood my heart with light. Lord, my heart with light. Inama akandiaba, ile breno zokondo lo baba, ila prende gele bolo godono, latia prende gali bala gada, le prevege de bogodono bayagada, i branda bayege de bogodono, latana baganda bayege de baga, i kande brege de bogodono sata, la branda, ra branda, ra branda, ra branda, holo flood my heart with light. Flood my heart with light. In a mosha, in a brandos, in a kendesh, rabina mosa, rabrande gede, le prege de bo, le kanda baya, in la bana zoto, le prevege de ba, in la ganda baye, le mosso preno sandala baye kandas. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed.